Hi, my name is Matt Weston, and I'm here to give you a brief tour of my home studio in Lucan, Ontario. Thank you to the Toronto AES for giving me this opportunity to share it with you. The studio is called Swamp Songs, but if anyone has a better name suggestion, please let me know. The studio is located in the basement of a raised ranch style home and has eight and a half foot ceilings other than some bulkhead areas. When I found the place, the basement was framed in for the furnace room, two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a large recreation room area. The bedrooms became the control room and overdub booth, while the rec room became the live room. There's also a little spot underneath the stairs for the occasional amp or maybe a saxophone player. There's a separate electrical circuit put in specifically for audio equipment. For construction, I went with 5 8 inch drywall as opposed to the standard half inch, and the gaps are filled with Roxel safe and sound. There are no double walls or floating floors, but there is a nice laminated glass window between the control room and overdub booth, and exterior steel doors have been used for all doorways. For cable pass-throughs, I've used 3-inch diameter PVC pipe, and these are then filled with foam. The isolation isn't on par with a professional studio, but it gets the job done. I have no problems recording drums in one room and guitar amps in another. The leakage is pretty minimal and wouldn't be a problem if one of those instruments needed to be recut after the fact. Acoustic treatment in the live room consists of OERT's old baffles, thanks to Bob Breen for those, a cloud above the drums, and some corner bass traps. The booth has some scatter blocks, a cloud, and there's often some packing blankets hanging off some mic stands. The control room has corner bass traps, scatter blocks, and a cloud above mix position. Sonarworks Sound ID is also used to provide a flatter response for my monitors. I like to work on music by live musicians, so I've invested in some instruments as well. Being a drummer, I have a kit and some snare options, but I also have some great keyboards available to record, including a grand piano, a 61 Hammond organ, and a Rhodes. I went with a modular setup for gear in the control room rather than a console. This has allowed me to build up my gear collection over time, and I'm almost done, I swear. My prized gear is my Rupert Neve designs and API equipment. There's also a couple 1176s and a custom Audio Germany Sontex style EQ for mastering. Interface choice was really important for me. A couple years back, I had a flood in the basement and I had to take the whole desk apart while the floor was replaced. I had been hanging on to a Blackline Audio modded Digi 002R for about 15 years and I knew its time was almost up. So I decided to make the switch before rewiring the desk. I went with a Focusrite Red 16 line for a couple of practical reasons. One, it had similar but expanded I.O. as the 002, so it would fit right in and allow me to grow a bit more. Two, it has three ways to connect to your computer, including Dante, which I could use with my current 2010 Mac Pro, as well as Thunderbolt 3, which I could use in the future when I finally upgrade my computer. Some of the music I've recorded here includes The Dyadics, The Cedar Sisters, The Marrieds. Josh Geddes. Too quiet, I never knew. The 
quiet I never knew. The quiet I never knew. The quiet I never knew. We were walking. I also get my family and friends together a few times a year to release songs under the Weston Family Band moniker. And please watch for our cover of Donny Hathaway's This Christmas coming soon. This studio isn't my full-time job, but it's a passion for me, and I'd like to thank the members of the Toronto Audio Engineering Society for allowing me to share that passion with you. If you have any questions, I'll be in the chat. Thanks.